Hey folks, just doing a quick sound check. Let me know if everything's working okay. Yeah, we'll be live in about six minutes, folks.
Uh, one minute, folks. Hang in there. Welcome everyone. We are live. <clears throat> yeah, tons going on here. Uh, I guess uh, I saw a bunch of comments on the channel just now talking about Baba being up. Yeah, the rumor is uh, Hunter Biden's buying. He's long. So anyway, that's that's a good joke, right? All right. So a uh, lot going on. I want to thank everyone for the, your patience with what's going on right now. Uh, I'm not going to get personal or uh, disclose any information, but just know everything's okay and I'm doing fine and uh, we're going to keep going. I'm working on a schedule and still kind of in, I guess, uh, in progress of trying to get a schedule on how I'm going to run the channel here for the next couple uh, couple weeks or uh, until we can figure out what's going on. Excuse me. Um, so... I will let you know that as soon as I can. Probably what I'll do is a brief video explaining what's going to go on. I'll post it on the channel as usual. And so, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll go that route. Yeah, Jack Mob reemerged. How funny, huh? Uh, yeah, we're living in uh, 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 an interesting world right now. And, um, yeah, this is not a political channel. We're not going to get political. We're going to stick to the markets and talk about a lot of things I've been actually telling you folks about over the past several weeks is starting to come into play and I'll, I'm gonna cover all the markets and go through as I usually do on this live stream, go through you know, the equity markets and interest rates and we'll touch on Bitcoin and all kinds of other things. So, and then we'll finally get to covering individual stocks because there's just a ton of stuff going on. Yeah. Um, I have a buddy of mine that's worried. I see somebody talking about the vaccines that FEMA is going to set up these sites where they're just going to block the road and you're going to have to go through and they're going to inject you as you go by uh, forced inoculation. So, well, I don't think that's going to happen. I sure hope not. Uh, the roads will get pretty barren as soon as the first one happens. They won't pull it off for long, but I don't think that's going to happen. He's uh, going a little crazy on that stuff. But the... Um, uh, what I want to cover today, I'm, I'm going to have to try to cover a lot of things. I'm pretty sure there, I may do one more live stream, maybe Friday. Not sure about that. Um, uh, but this will probably be it for the week, just so you know. And um, I do have this video I've been, <laughs> been telling you folks about. Uh, I did, I've been managing to get this thing done. I've got one more segment to do. There's a two-part segment coming out on, on Kathy Wood and her, her firm, and I'm rebuilding their firm, show them how good they could be, 
and how you people can make them uh, better than you than you can believe. So uh, it is uh, an expose on our product, but it's really what you can do when you have this advanced technology in your hand. So anyway, um, um, let's go ahead and let's kick into the into the charts and start to take a look at what's going on out there. And, and there's a lot going on as, as you'll see. And let me get over and we'll start with the S&P futures. And as I've seen some comments here, this is the weekly chart, but what I wanna, wanna, wanna talk about here is uh, we're penetrating through the STX numbers. And those of you that are familiar with the, the channel is these SDX numbers are the daily market grid and we'll bring up some of these numbers just to look at here and the RTX number is right now 37.52 the highest let me get it to the right place folks sorry about that the the RXT is 38.37 and the current high is 38.47 so we're about 10 handles above that if we finish the day at 1.47 uh you know above above that 38.47 number uh it's just going to be uh we're going to issue a a rxt sell and so 38.37.75, if it closes above there, we're going to get an RXT sell. And then from, from that level, we'll start to uh, probably go sideways to down. I talked to you folks about, trying to remember how long ago it was, maybe a week ago, maybe two weeks ago now, as a, a target on the S&P for 38.54 to 38.59. And we're getting awful close to that number right now. We've been 47 high. And so we're getting pretty close to things. And the unfortunate part of what's going on out in the world, I, I saw an interesting comment somewhere. Somebody said, is it a bubble if everybody thinks it's a bubble? And, you know, the answer for that, for the contrarians are going to say, uh, you know, no, it's not. It's going to keep going until people start to believe it's going to keep going. And uh, it, it, the investing world is about like the political world. It's very split right now. You've got uh, every time, just because the market's going up, it's a bubble now. That's like the, the common word that you, that you hear out there. But this move above STX today, it may not be that significant. We'll see how, how it all plays out. SPX, actually, I'm looking at the futures. SPX is trading 38.53. So it is trading right at that 54 number. So we're we're up 54 handles. And I want to uh, say something. I, I come back on screen for a minute here. Is uh, when the election happened, if you remember, we had five gaps in a row. And the interesting thing about that was I talked about there was these relentless, fearless buyers. Well, they're back again. And the last couple of times there's been any kind of political news, uh, and specifically, just to say this, is anything to do with the Biden election, there's this huge bid showing up. And um, it, it just, uh, it's kind of bizarre. And, and so we'll see how how this thing plays out. It's uh, the machines are running. I'm going to show you some things that are going on out there right now. Machines are running really, really hard and just bidding this thing. It, there's they're relentless, and so there is a risk here at a for a top between this 54, uh, 3854, 3859 level could print 62, uh, but watch out for that. But this this buyers, whoever they are, it appears they're the same, <laughs> it's the same type of configuration that I watch. And I watch uh, a lot of live ticks in my life. And in the past six months, we've seen these days 
where the the machines are running the show and they're just bidding this thing absolutely relentlessly fearlessly they've got control of the market and that's what's happening today so as we go back to the charts and take a look here what what we're seeing is that on the screen that you know as those of you that are subscribers i know the comments from the subscribers uh you can see because they have the uh, they have the grid so they they know that the market is actually uh above a lot of these numbers and it, it's above even on the nasdaq i think on the weekly somebody posted we'll look at that in a minute but yeah these are these are pretty bizarre numbers so this is the daily futures that we're looking at we're going to go over to spx real quick Take a look, it's very obvious here on, on the SPX, it's just blowing through the top. If we go over and start to look at the weekly grid here, this is the solid lines are up here. We are right now 3859.96. That's where I came up with the 59 number, by the way. And that high so far today, 3854. So we're not quite at the R, R XT number for the weekly but the other thing and I've been talking about this for a while that's really kind of bizarre we're not seeing any type of major intermediate acceleration here and and in just a few minutes I'm going to go through our database that I usually cover that's important to understand as well our database is currently I think eight roughly 80 percent long on the intermediate basis so that means eight out of ten stocks are bullish. I'll go through that de detail here in a few minutes. It's significant. Uh, but we're not seeing acceleration here. And to me, this is somewhat of a warning sign. I talked about this, I believe, in the live stream I did the other night that we're probably going to be constrained inside of these market grid on a weekly basis. So we're, we're there right now. Uh, we did print, you know, we've come off about three handles since I just mentioned that this thing printed up there. We may be getting very close to climactic type pattern, especially if we get the R RXT sell on the dailies today, both on, it's possible that we get them both on the futures and on the SPX. And that doesn't happen very often. We're really, uh, it just, it just doesn't happen because of the virtual 24-hour trading that goes on in the ESs or in the E-minis, they just usually have a different configuration on the market grid. So we, we'll we see if there's any significance if we both get, if we get both uh, the RX, RXT cells on the SPX and, and that. Let's go out, I'm, I'm gonna spend a few minutes today and talk about, um, I see just a real quick comment that uh, Jacob was talking about, uh, short the gap up next week. There are so many gaps in this chart from the last year. It's just crazy. I, I, I don't know if we fill all the gaps that are in the S&P chart, then there's, there's a big collapse coming then for, to fill that. But as I've talked about a lot on this, on this channel, I don't think that's what's going to happen. So we're gonna take a look and go to SPX, we're going to go to weekly or a monthly chart. And I'm going to flop over, I'm going to take a look at this chart. If it doesn't work the way I want it to, then I'll come back to this chart. But it's in the white chart mode. But this kind of gives you a real illustration of what what this what this market looks like. This goes back to 97. So I'm going to draw a couple of things on the screen here. So this is the old two low, this is the old nine low, this is the 2016 low, and then we've got all of this craziness. And I'm gonna clean this chart up here. You got this, you know, people talk about the bugle. Uh, bugles have always been bullish in my my book. When I saw everybody talking about this, that was that was your your signal that we're going to all to all time new highs. And I remember all the trolls that were on the channel last uh, July when I started talking about an all-time new high in the market and all I heard was about Ray Dalio was telling us that there's going to be a great depression 
and all of this stuff happening and uh, guess it's not going to happen. It's been postponed anyway. But let me clean up this chart for a second here and I just want to I want to try to get a cleaner version of this. I just want to look at the the bars on this chart and we are definitely by any stretch of imagination we we are definitely at a uh, in a parabolic move here. And I'm going to try to make sense of this from a basic Elliott viewpoint. Um, I actually need I, I need to get on a different chart here to um, I'm going to I'm going to attempt something here real quick uh, so I can get a little more data. OK, this is much better. So now what I've got, I'm going to try to squeeze this out just a bit further. Yeah, this this is going to give you the, the perspective that I want you to see. So this let me draw this up again, folks. So bear with me. We got three hours. We got plenty of time. Yeah, dragon head for sure, Don. Um, yeah, we got three hours. We're going to take our time, get through this. So let's let's just take a look and let's I think this is probably one of the most important charts we're going to look at today to be honest with you. And you know this is boy I'll tell you maybe I should find I, I think I have one uh, a you know the tulip bubble chart. This is probably as close to it as you've ever seen. And you know maybe we're in the euphoric stage here certainly looking like it and the S&P has reversed about six handles since it printed that 54, which was the tar one of the targets. So that that's interesting. That happened while we're live here. But this this pattern, what I, I listen, you folks have met me. Uh, most of you, some of you I know have known me for a long time. So um, it'll, it'll be difficult for me to 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 lie here. Uh, if you can see down at this bottom right here, that's a 1987 crash. Look how insignificant that looks uh, at the time. And I lived through that and traded through that. Uh, but this is when people thought I was nuts. And around 94, I said, what's going to happen next? You won't believe, which I believe the markets were going to go vertical. They went much higher than I thought. But here's, here's the thing that I believe is going to happen. I don't have any way of putting these, these actual numbers on the page right now or letter. I'd love to... I, I need to get a better editor. I keep asking if you guys know a good live stream editor that you've seen somebody use so I can mock up these charts real time, it would be really nice. Um, but anyway, this is 87, but I believe this entire sequence here, I'll draw and I'll put an arrow to it. This was a, a, a top of a, a major wave three. And folks thought I was crazy because I said this, when we were going down in 09, this is the 09 low here, I thought this is probably an ABC fourth wave and we're going much higher down the road. And that seemed to be a really crazy comment to make back in. That was around probably 2010, maybe 11 when I was saying that. So now what we've got, we're going to try to break this down the best I can. I'm going to do it in this macro view, in this large view. But I believe this first sequence here this is a one, two, this is wave three, this is a wave four. I'll go through that here shortly. And now we got the sub waves going where there's another one, minor two, a three. And then what we saw in this craziness going down to the lows here was another wave four. And now this is a vertical wave five that we're that we're experiencing right now. And it's parabolic. Now some of this is being, I wouldn't say exaggerated, but we're looking at scale. This is actually a linear scale. It is not a log scale. Even if you do a log scale, it looks pretty crazy, okay? And so, yeah, um, so this is the picture. This is what, everybody's watching the same movie, right? So we we know that that everybody
Sorry about that. Get a call on Skype in the middle of a live stream. You got to love it. Okay, so, um, yeah, so what what's going on here from the standpoint of the markets, and this is, this is an important conversation to have, is this parabolic move, I can tell you from experience of my the whole 41 year, I'll do air quotes, 41 year experience, that it is impossible when these things are in these vertical moves to actually figure out where the top is. Now, maybe I get lucky and 54 to 59 is the magic number. I can tell you back in 2000 and around 2006, I uh, know it was 2004, I projected a 1546, I think, high for the S&P, and that was the high in, in late, late 08. That was, that was the, the high then. And actually, it was 07 when the highs were printed. And so that was exactly the, the pattern. Everything worked out. The symmetrics on the wave count right now is really really odd and they don't it doesn't seem to be matching any theory so if you're an Elliottitian trying to make sense of this parabolic curve you're going to have a tough time because you're going to be looking at extensions of extensions of extensions and that's the euphoria that these markets are in right now and I, I've talked a lot about this I'll, I'll go into uh, probably not a big rant but a little mini rant here Talking about MMT, I think that there's going to be a combination of MMT. We saw the fairy godmother, Janet Yellen, come out and say, we've got to spend and spend big, right? Uh, first, Some of the first things that Joe Biden's doing is extending mortgage foreclosure moratoriums and rents and all of that stuff is getting extended. I mentioned this, I think, on the live stream the other night. So all that's getting extended. That he's stopping, the, you know, there's no, so if you were working on the border wall, you just lost your job this morning because they're, they're shutting all activity and building of any kind of border wall and everything's going to switch. Now, Trump did the same thing when he came in, right? He, he flipped everything he could off on, on uh, Obama. And really, Biden's just Obama 2.0. You get Susan Rice. You look at the, the cabinet. They're all people that were heavy, heavy into the Obama uh, presidency and the entire cabinet. So I, I've been joking that it is Obama 2.0, and Obama's the shadow government running the Biden administration. We'll see how it works out. That, that, that's, about as, that's about as deep a, as it goes, right? But the, uh, this MM, they're going to use MMT, modern monetary theory, if you're not familiar with it. It's basically of creating this fiat currency, and then spending it in the government spends it in. Well, they tried it in Venezuela. didn't work very good. No one's tried it on a large scale. has everything to do with the Green New Deal, all of the expenditures and things that they want, they, the new administration, wants to do to uh, in their vision. They get to do that. They're, they're in. They've been sworn in. They get to do it, okay? Our job as investors is to figure out what it means for us. And you know, like I said, uh, kind of going back and just going on this little bit of a rant is it's just really about understanding what's going on. If that's the game, then I've talked about this before, we're looking at maybe a S&P 10,000 down the road, you know, three years, five years, it could be just crazy. So that's why I'm telling you this conversation about the chart I just showed you, going vertical, being parabolic, trying to figure out where that stops. It could double again from here. I'm serious. Uh, our, you know, our models, I'm going to go through the details when I finish with this little rant. I'm going to go to our database, then we're going to dig into uh, uh, NASDAQ, and we're going to talk about the Russell, all that stuff, because I, I told you on uh, the other night on the live stream, I mentioned that I think the Russell trade is done for right now. And I think it's going to be done, even if the market finds a minor top, the Russell now is probably gonna be a target. It, 
I have read, and I'm sure you folks have too, you can go to any financial site and all you're going to see now is, you know, buy, buy, you know, buy the small caps and mid caps and everything I told you back in July to watch for happened. Now everybody's on board. Does not mean that that trade's over, but it does mean that it's probably a little frothy right now. And so you're going to have to watch this. The Russell may still go up. Maybe the indexes all keep going up. I'll, I'll, I'll try to do my best to get some analysis out to you by, by next week before we get started. And, you know, so that is all going to be part of what we've got to look at from that standpoint. Yeah, somebody says Obama markets were great. Well, it's the same game, right? Um, they pumped all the money and that, that's what they did. So, yeah, they were great. But you have to remember the S&P when Obama came in was, uh, you know, at 800. So uh, it was pretty simple. Uh, you know, I've, I've been around a long time. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen a lot of stuff, you know. Uh, uh, the Reagan market was good, too. But Jimmy Carter was so bad, he destroyed the markets that, you know, Taxation was at 60%. Uh, things have been like that for a long time. So, yeah. So, I, and I've said this before. Politics matter and taxes matter. I think the MMT thing that we're going to get is actually going to alleviate the need to tax really heavy. Although there's a lot of folks, I can tell you, I know a lot of, uh, of financial planners and people that, that do some big handle some big families and they have been shuffling the deck for the last three months uh, especially since November they've been a frantic move to reorganize all these large families and how the, where their assets are and what they're going to do because they're already planning for higher estate taxes everything is, is going on so that, that's just part of the reality it happens in every you know I've watched it go from uh, Carter to Reagan you know to you know to bush to clinton and so forth i've been around a long time watching this stuff so in the end it probably doesn't matter that much you just have to understand the differences and that's what our job is right now and the only thing that we have to deal with is this giant parabolic curve that we're watching and what the outcome of that is so it's going to have to be uh, watched very closely and i know a lot of times people criticize me i believe in our software i've been using this software uh, I developed it back in the 80s, right? So I've not seen it miss any major moves up or down. And there's a lot of work. We're 80% long. Let's go. Let's go over to the database and take a look at exactly what that what that looks like. So I can get off screen here and start to look at exactly that. So let's looking at the uh, WaveTech database here. This is the thing that is interesting. Last night for this morning's open. We had about 950 new buys. We had about three, what, 270 uh, sells. So we had a bullish, if you notice over here where my cursor is, we had bullish ratios both on the daily one, two, and three, two. So we were buying really a lot of stock this morning. And, but the, what's interesting is the percent bullish is continuing to grind out. And what that means is that the database is just rotating here. And so we're staying around 70 percentile. The number to watch here, if you're a subscriber, is 62%. If we take out bullish percent 62, then we, we will roll over to 58 to, to around the 50 level, somewhere in there, possibly going down to 48. That will be your next kind of support zone for the number of positions in there. Now, the database has 16,428 symbols in it. So right now, 11,577 11, stocks are bullish right now, or meaning they are in uptrends. So anybody who tries to throw some crap out at me that we're bearish, you know, uh, this is why we have software. This is why we are, we're quants and what we do as far as the markets go. You know, uh, you absolutely, this is a very robust market. We've been on board with this thing really since uh, this short-term database started buying on March 26th. 
and it started buying big time. You know, we've got our institutional advisors. We've got a lot of folks that we introduced to our software some in after April and May that have done amazing with this stuff because we've been buying this thing. You know, this is a non-emotional environment that we're looking at here. If we look at the weeklies, we we had just a rotation, but let's go over to the to the weekly database for a minute. And this is what's really amazing is it is right now, you see the number here. I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to blow this up. Uh, I, this is the only tool I have that I can actually So you'll see here, I've got it in this little window, 79.25% is, is the bullish number. And let me move this out of the way. Yeah, and you can look over at the a lot of the indexes on the side over here, and you can see that that they are they're actually all 11 of the 12 sectors are long right now, and they've been long since most of them July and June. Some came in a little later. Uh, financials were lagging. Once the interest rate started to turn, we saw financials kick in. They've only been long 24 days, already up 5%. But you can look here at consumer non-cyclical, came in in July. So going back in June, conglomerates and basic materials and and the basic materials was the recovery trade that was signaled on a sector level way back in June. It's now getting long in the tooth. Typically this what, what these numbers over here tell us the current duration is that we are looking at 156 days of 164. So on average this model will hold 164. If if we pop up this this box right here, hopefully it's not too small for you to see. We pop this up. Typically, it's it's still in what we call accumulate phase. What will happen once it gets in six more days, it will go to hold, and it will have to exceed the it will have to exceed the maximum to get into underperform. So that's a long ways away. The maximum. This index is actually held for 351 days. And these are the dates of the target. So the projected duration right now is February 2nd is the date. And these are trading days. If we go out to the maximum, that's all the way out to, to 10 October 27th. The projected profit right now is 13. We've exceeded that. We've exceeded the standard deviation. We've exceeded everything, okay? That's what this tells us. So the statistical map, just if you start to look at some of these indexes, some of them are already have already exceeded what their expectations are, okay? So I'm gonna try something here real quick. This should work out for me. I just wanna be on screen so I don't have to keep going on and off screen here. But yeah, so as we, we look at all of this stuff though, this is exactly what I'm trying to tell you. So we're going to see a rotation. So the basic materials will start to flatten out. We'll start to see financials pull in. We'll see some of these other indexes come in. Uh, energy, we know energy starting to move. All of that stuff is, is going, going to start to catch up. So there's still a big rotation that's likely to occur in this market. So it's that's why I, I, I'm cautioning you. Don't get too crazy about the, you know, trying to predict a major top or doing those type of things because we're we're a ways off from anything like that happening. And so let's just, uh, as we look at the database, it makes that clear. Now this database has been as high as around 92% long back in 2009 when it turned around big. This. We're, we're somewhat frothy, but there, here's something I want to show you here. When we, when we go to the All Stats page, and this starts to break down and look at the database at a slightly different level. And we, over here on the right, we look at the weekly. On average, our weekly models hold 201 days. Right now, the average days of all of the positions that are long, which are 13,000 of them, 
because it's 80%, right? The average long, uh, days long right now is only 70. And what that tells us our current, our, well, that's the standard age today. The current average is 68.87. The percent fulfilled is 34%. So we've only fulfilled 34% of the average amount that of holding period that these trades have. Now we're gonna to go to the next level and the average profit is 30% on all of these. And uh, standard deviation is 72, but the current average profit is 21. So we're getting close. It's interesting. We're a long ways away from the duration, but we're starting to get close to the average profit. The percent fulfilled of the average profit right now is 73.3. But one of the things that I, I just want to bring out again is that it really is all of these metrics, some of these metrics like this one in particular, may get blown up from what the normal has been because you know they always talk about the new normal. Well, the new normal is 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 that things are expanding and going beyond where you think they could go. You know, no one thought uh, you know a year ago, as we said here right now. This is what uh, the twentieth on. On January 21st, uh, one year ago today, these models were very bullish. They were up in the 70% level, but we just, uh, the, coming into this coming week, we started to see sales on the weekly, and it started to get relentless. This was before the COVID. Even though the markets were at new highs, we were starting to see selling. And I was getting calls from our institutional clients like, hey, what are we, what's going on? What do you think is going on? Because we're getting all these, these sell orders coming in. And, uh, you know, it's like, you know, that's just, it's picking up a lot of trends are starting to fail and not accelerate or be in a place where the models just didn't want to hold them anymore. So we're going to come into a 55 week cycle if you go from the breakdown. So some, we're about, I think I figured out we're about six, eight weeks away from this cycle of the of the Fibonacci cycle from the rollover last year. So, you know, we're going to come into this market if we continue to see it stay as strong as it has. We're going to come into this market actually in this mode where we're seeing a very robust number of stocks being held. If we start to see selling, uh, you know, I'm going to report on that. This database, I'm always data driven, and this is what keeps me keeps me going in a direction. So that's why I'm going through this detail on this database right now, because what it's telling us is that 80% of the symbols are long. We've still got maybe anywhere from 50 to 70% of the holding period to go yet. And we are about 70% of the, of the gains have been realized. So what we're going to, the metrics that I'm going to be watching here is do we hit the return metrics? Are they going to be significant in this cycle or will it be the holding period? So we're going to start to look at things, especially if we start to see some selling coming in the database. So that's the thing that I'm going to be reporting to you as we come into this, uh, this next cycle. Let's call it the next six, eight weeks, the next two months. That's going to be the thing that you're going to need to watch. So... But as as we as we continue on, uh, let's go back to the let's go back to the, the the chart, and then we'll finish this segment. We'll go into the Nasdaq and Russell and the spreads, and then we'll we'll move on from there. Now the yeah the S and P is still pushing. It traded down a bit. It's still pushing thirty eight fifty one twenty, a high fifty four and change. We'll get that in a minute. The uh, yeah the high fifty four fifty seven so far. But this parabolic current situation is exactly what we're what we're trying to figure out is this going to be the classic you know I'll use the term bubble where where the where the market rolls over and we just see you know it just relentlessly selling and everybody's bailing out you know I don't know um, I found a, a a podcast that was never broadcast the other day 
I think for Phil, I'm going to put that out there, but it was me about November of 2019 talking about what I was seeing for the markets. And one of the things that had just happened, and this is relevant because I saw some things from, uh, I think, when they had... Um, research people at Charles Schwab had posted something on Twitter this morning. And what I was talking about was that when Charles Schwab actually moved to take their tickets away, I realized Robin Hood was leading the way, but Robin Hood was, you know, this little tiny thing, it's still very tiny on the relevant thing, but it has grown quite a bit. It, it's actually became a, a real player, but at the time they were tiny. But when Swab took away the ticket fees, the charges on that, and made free trading available, they also announced that they were going to make the fractional trading available, which as you know, Robinhood was the leader in both of these areas, so they get the credit for this. But when the big players came in, I, I, I think I'll post this thing. I listened to it the other day and I thought, yeah, this is still very relevant. But the thing that I talked about in this podcast is that I thought that the volume on the markets would quadruple in the next period of time because of fractional shares. And of course, we've had all of this stuff that we've seen, not to mention the, the Fed and everybody uh, coming into, into play. Uh, it was, um, you know, that, that pumping of money has a lot to do with what went on, but so many new players came in. I think most of the the, the checks that people got, they just put it in the market and speculate. And some of some folks have done just amazingly well, you know. Uh, it, but the the point is um, is you know that this fractional shares we have a lot more players, we have a lot more accessibility to the markets, and this is going to just grow from this moment. So this factor in itself, uh, new players in the markets, new new ideas and concepts and everything is going to per per perpetuate this to a large degree. So let's go ahead and let's dig into going back to these other charts. I think they're easier on the eye. That's a good thing that S&P just traded down to 47. That's wonderful. I heard a magical order filled, which is a good, a good thing for me. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at at these monthly charts, and I, I just want to point this out. That we look at the monthly grid real quick. We're, I, I know I spent a lot of time on the SP. I'm going to finish this off here. But at the monthly grid, we, we're up at the top end of the weekly, but as we look at the month, 38.90 is R2. So we're almost to R2. We've been 54.57. Maybe that was the print high. We'll see. But look at the momentum over here on PPM1. It's just skyrocketing. You know, you're just looking at amazing uh, momentum. We're at 3.9%. I've talked about this before. I think this thing will continue. What that tells us is that the 10 period or the 10 month moving average, which is way down at 33.60, jumping at about 120 handles per month, that's gonna be your major support at some stage probably two months, three months from here, and that's going to be around 35, 3,600. So this market's downside is going to be limited. And because we're at the levels that we're at, these numbers are going to appear much bigger because 1% of 3,800 is, is, you know, is going to really give us a lot of ability to push the market in numbers, so the numbers are going to feel bigger than the actual percentages. So it's almost getting to the, the point that you have to, you know, put everything in log charts to make sense of them. Okay, so let's go on and let's, let's move over to the, the NASDAQ. NASDAQ futures, this, this is pretty amazing, actually. You can go through the last time that we had any situation like this was the election. And this is what I was talking to you about earlier, is that the election, the, if you recall that week, we got five gaps in a row. That was the last time that the NASDAQ futures were able to close above their RXT number on a daily basis. And we 
kind of went up and it took about three three days and then it finally went up but there was so much momentum in that market and it this was this was the fourth I believe here yeah fourth fifth so yeah it wasn't until the following Monday where the market spiked up opened higher then it sold off so this is going to be interesting like I said this is the first time since November but I also there's a reference here which is that the whoever these players are that are coming in they come in inauguration day election day you know, this, we'll see. I want to want everybody to watch the pattern. You know, comment on this thing if if you see this. Um, but the um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to get very interesting. So let's go over to the weekly. And I know somebody mentioned this on on the chat a little bit ago. Is that the RXT number on a weekly is being penetrated as well? That number is on the NASDAQ futures, 13,221, high 13,294, and last 279. So we're still above there. That's going to be a number to watch on Friday. If we stay above that, that could be a signal. The last time we did that, on the election. So, and we did get, like I said, we got some follow through on that following week, but then we went sideways. And this RXT cell, I have seen it where it's a significant situation where it's actually signaling the top. We saw one back in June of last year it was a really good RXT cell that turned into something significant and material. But this one with the momentum that we're seeing is not likely. And, and this is really interesting, but let's go to the monthly. And the, the monthly RXT numbers, as we look at that, the high, as I mentioned, 13,294. 13,464 13, is R2. So there's a lot of movement. We can continue this move higher during the month of January. So if we do get an RXT sell, all they mean is a one to three day sideways to down pattern and typically they move toward the lower end of the market grid and so they're not they're not material but there are opportunities there to trade off of them and those are for shorter term traders typically they don't have a lot of implication as far as the long term stuff goes so we're but I already mentioned this but look at the Nasdaq 5.16 on PPM1. That's insane. Uh, that major supports 11,249. It's running about 800 points per month. So that's going to be 12,000. Come into February, it'll be 12,000. It'll be 13,000 as we come into March. So the, the support line, or what I call the demand line, is going to continue to move higher. And it's going to be within three months, we're going to be, you know, right where we're trading now or, or higher. So this market does have some, a, a lot more to go on the upside from that viewpoint. What can happen during that time is it can trade back down. If we just look at, you know, the potential, the, if we look at the range that was projected on the market grid, 12,612 uh, S2, was 12,306 and we saw a low of 12,491 so we didn't quite make an S2 but we did get an S1 out of this thing and now we're trying to get to an S uh, R2 so that so far that's been the range so the upside probably somewhat limited to around the 12,464 number could extend up since this is a monthly toward 13,460, uh, I'm sorry, 13,770 to 14,043 would be the extreme for the monthly. So we'll see if this b magical bid, I've, ta I've talked about this before, we'll have to see if this magical bid actually shows up and, and becomes any kind of material event that we need to watch because it, this is this is the magic, right? And like I said, 
if you look you just saw the evidence on the on the week of the fourth as we looked at the weekly we saw that big bid come in at the election now here we are again another political day inauguration we're seeing another bid come in so we'll see if there's follow through on this this is going to be important if we see this thing follow through then that's going to be um is is going to be more evidence of whatever's going on <laughs> yeah uh what is it uh jjw uh, sell the rips and buy the rips yeah just buy right um yeah so like i said there there's there's some minor stuff going on but for the most part this thing is is projecting a lot higher now one of the things i didn't put on here which i have done in the past and i, I think i'm pretty deep into this thing for today uh, is look at some of the fibonacci numbers and i can tell you that there are numbers for the s p that are projected that are valid right now let's just let's just backspace and let's just do that real quick i, I can't talk about it and not show you so let's let's put this back on on a weekly time frame. We're back to SBX for a minute, and let's put some. I believe it's on this. Let's put the Fibonacci projection tool out there. Yeah, so you'll see these dots up above here. I'll show you what where those are, and these are pretty bizarre numbers. And these are valid projections, and these projections have been in and around since October of last year. And I talked about this on a video. That's where everybody thought I was losing my mind, I think, from the, the standpoint of, of what's going on. But when you look at these dots, these are, these are big numbers. The minimum projection is 4605. We're sitting here at 3848. And that sounds like a lot, but it's it's not. I think it's about six or seven percent from here. We're getting 1.3 today, so all of these numbers can be hit easily. The next target is 51.39 and 54.68. And you know, I I realize these are just crazy, crazy numbers to talk about, but these are valid objectives that are coming from the patterns that are being generated on the intermediate. And this is also likely to be hit maybe in, you know, in this by second quarter, you know, we'll, we'll get all the uh, sell in May and go away folks coming here in, in about two months. But the, the bottom line is this thing is trending. It's got strong trends, as I showed you on all these indices weekly uh, monthly are, are are giant trends they're not small trends they're major trends that are out there so that is um, that is that's just the the reality of the patterns doesn't mean they have to go here but these are are substantial and the last it's interesting i've got a couple of cycles here i'm just going to put see what the date was on this cycle that got hit so on 515, actually on 522 of 2020, got a major cycle low triggered. And it wasn't until, like I said, until October 23rd is when we were getting these upward ranges and everything. And of course, this was, this big reversal week was the, was the election, okay? So let's go on. Let's get to the Russell. Let's get start to move on a little faster here. So as we, we look at Russell Weekly, I'm probably going to stick in there. We're seeing some momentum start to bleed off here. PPM1 is still very strong it's still up at 2.12 but it's starting to cross its first derivative ppm two and three are still in basically a safe zone but those numbers are way down below so what what we're starting to see here when you start to see the crossover on these ppms the price pressure momentum typically what that suggests is that there will be a test of 
that 10 week moving average. That's at 1976 right now, but it's moving up at about 50 handles per week. So it's going to be closer around 20, 25, and a week after next, it'll be 2075. And so we're gonna see the market most likely start to move toward that level. And this is why I also, I'm gonna to go to the spread next and show you these spreads. This is also why we're, why we're looking at the, um, uh, this is what I was warning about the other night on the spread is that the Russell versus NASDAQ is, is probably completing itself. And so if you have that trade on, I would definitely lighten it up or even consider getting out because I think it's going to come back in quite a bit, which tells us that the tech rally is going to continue and we're just not going to get the full participation of the Russell. So I think there will be some things to look at and that's why the Russell is starting to show up. If we go back to the, to the timeline here, you'll see the Russell right now is up 0.14 with the composite up 1.92. So that is definitely a, um, a sign that it's, that's gonna happen, I believe. There'll be days where the Russell will claw back a little bit, but uh, from a spread trading standpoint, you probably, as I mentioned a couple of days ago, you probably should take some profits. And so hopefully you got that on because I've been talking about that trade since July. That, that's been a, a really good trade. Let's look at the monthly Russell here. And the monthly Russell is printing up. Here's another sign that maybe the Russell's played out a little bit. The, the R3 number is 2149. The high so far, 2173. RXT is 2203. I remember talking about this in the last couple of weeks possibly on a live stream or on a, a daily video that it seemed kind of unlikely we would get up to the RXT number. Well, we've we've exceeded R3, so we're pretty darn close to being able to print that number. But we're also looking at the, at the PPMs, just like the rest of them on the monthly. We're at 6.59. So this trend isn't going to end. It's just going to stall. So before... People start trying to say, oh, Kendall's uh, bearish on Russell. No, I'm not. What I'm saying is this thing has to backfill. There needs to be, you know, all of this euphoria around every story. Go to CNBC, uh, go on the app and look at how many stories are telling you that if, uh, if you're going to do anything during the Biden administration is and higher interest rates and you're going to be doing these small mid cap trades that's where you want to that's where you want to buy everybody's telling you that now so uh like i said it doesn't mean that it's just going to roll over i just think it's going to stall for a short period of time and that rotation will come back in i'll be watching that spread because i think that spread will come in pretty good and uh those of you that knew uh, uh that have been around a little while know i i proclaim I, i'm a self-proclaimed expert in trading spreads because I did it for many, many years, especially with the banks and the yield curve. And that's uh, that's where we're going to go next. We're going to go to interest rates. We're going to talk about the yield curve a little bit. We're going to talk about expectations there. The dollar and then gold will we'll hit on silver. And then the next, uh, then we'll probably hit Bitcoin. And by that time, I'm hoping that we'll be close to the top of the hour and we can start to dig into some of the uh, requests for individual stocks that you might want me to cover. But I, th I think there's some, uh, uh, th there's some interesting things going out in that world as well. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look and let's do just that. Yeah, just taking a quick read at the uh, chat line, see what's going on there. See if there's anything that's...
All right, folks, uh, let's go ahead and I've, I've got the daily daily chart of the 10 year, and this is a yield graph. So when it goes up, the bonds are going down. And so what this means is there's a lot of selling coming into the 10 year. We've seen this happen. There's been a big acceleration. I'm going to go through intermediate and long term viewpoint because this is going to be an important play. And especially for those of you who might have real estate interest and things of that sort, you know, I, I think the big one of the big things I've seen on Twitter flowing around right now that there's only 389, I think 389,000 homes for sale right now. And homes are selling so fast that, you know, it's it's crazy. Everybody's grabbing them. And two things are happening. Interest rates are going up. The home builders are starting to get a little negative, but they're always wrong anyway. I always say, if you want to find out what's not going to happen in interest rates, talk to a banker. And so it's the same thing with uh, the construction. But there's that that big movement that that's coming in and around the um, around you know the exodus from urban to suburbia that urban sprawl is happening and it's actually something even different happening than that there are small little towns across the country that are absolutely getting blown up um, i was just in austin texas last month and i can tell you what's going on in northwest austin actually all around Austin, but and I, I was in Northwest Austin, and I can tell you what's going on there is insane. You know, um, I think a 2,100 square foot home in, in that area right now has went from uh, roughly 300,000 to 700,000 in the last year and a half. I thought I saw you know, 22, 2300 square foot homes for 750,000 in that area. So everybody's going there. Elon, you know, all the tech companies are going there. It's a very hot area to say the least. And so, you know, th there's that is happening. It is kind of craziness where where I live in central Arizona is happening here as well. You you put something on a market, it's just gone. It's just gone. And it's uh, so that that craziness is happening. That scenario is what's putting demand on money and interest rates and all of that is part of what's going on. There is this big demand. And there's even in the refi market. I've always said that you'll get the most refi action when rates start to go up because people think they missed. It's the FOMO. It's the opposite, right? The fear of missing out on the low interest rate. So you get a lot of play there and all that stuff. So let's dig into these charts from the standpoint of what's going to go on. Let's go to weekly. And weekly got that R RXT sell, if you recall, a couple weeks ago. And that's when we printed up to the 1.9 on the 10 year. And it, it's absolutely been sideways. That's the signal, I tell you. The RXT sale doesn't mean it's a top in the end of the world. It, all it means is that you're going to get somewhere between one and around three weeks. And we trade into the market grid a little bit. So if we look at the low of 18, uh, 1.80, we have, we have not even got uh, last week. We did not get into the market grid very much. This one right now, 8.35. We still haven't hit an S1. So there, this is going to stay sideways. It's going to stay stable. And rates, and I talked about this, are going to stay above 1% now. Probably right now 115 to around 19 is going to be the range we're going to be bound in. But you're seeing uh, some of these trends starting to flatten out on the PPM. So all that means is that we're, we're going into the sideways range. What, what gets interesting is when we start to look at the monthly and we actually were able to exceed the RXT on the monthly that was at 1.87 we did print 1.91 and so that this is you're seeing this massive acceleration on the monthly so what this tells you is that interest rates contrary to you know the feds keeping the short rates the fed is keeping the short rates down they want the long rates to go up. 
This gives financial institutions and other folks the ability which to make money. That's why the financials have kicked in. That's why if they're going to continue to play in. That's also uh, fueling a lot of this small cap activity. So this is why I'm telling you that these trends aren't over. They're definitely going to continue at these levels from the standpoint of, of uh, interest rates keeping a bid. The spreads are going to be good. As I've talked about, other than the big major money center banks that have trading operations, banks don't take risks. They make margins. They charge fees. They're basically um, they're leeches. They take whatever they can get between the spreads and they charge fees. You know, uh, I read an article the other day, I think it was like, I, I may get this number wrong, but I think it was $18 billion in late fees charged in 2019. So just for people overdrafting their account, these guys stole $18 billion. So um, 18, maybe it was eight, yeah, 18 billion. Yeah, I think that's the right number actually. So, you know, that's that's what banks do. and. You know, I think they're under siege right now with a lot of fintech. There's a lot of, a uh, lot of new uh, companies coming out that are app-based that aren't charging the fees, and people are going to continue to migrate until, just like Charles Schwab figured out from the Robinhood situation, where they finally got rid of all of the, you know, ticket fees. They they saw the light. The banks will see it too. They just got to what they haven't figured out yet how they're going to make a living without them. And what might happen is we start to finally see a dissipation or a consolidation of the banks. And the thing that you see, and we see it in the brokerage environment, and this is the way every industry transitions, you get consolidation and then liquidation. And what we're seeing like on Charles Schwab buying TD, and there's gonna be other deals, there's a lot of, in the investment advisor world, there's a lot of firms buying up uh, smaller firms and they're buying buying them as fast as they can. Uh, we're seeing this in the financial sector substantially. A lot of it has to do with the disruption of uh, these apps and that the banking system, people are tired of being sucked dry on all these fees and everything that goes on. Okay. Yeah, uh, Scott, I, I see your comment here just made. Uh, yeah, the, the real estate market is absolutely insane right now. There's no doubt. So that's that. Let's look at the at the yield curve for just a, a minute here. And the one I'm going to focus on, this is one the Fed is really focused on. And this is the 530 spread. And, the, and this is really showing you how the steepening of the yield curve is happening. This thing continues to move higher. I think there's more in this. We're at 1.39. We'll probably get to 1.517. So if you were a client of mine, a mortgage banker, I'd be telling you how to position yourself in your, in your portfolio versus this spread happening right now. And this is going to continue to steepen a lot. So you're, you're definitely going to see this spread steepen. That's going to tell you one thing and one thing only is that the whole idea of the financial sector continuing to be starting to get a little healthier, being able to make more money. And some folks seem to be surprised that, you know, Goldman and uh, Wells Fargo, most importantly, uh, people were surprised by the earnings reports coming out. And that's the other thing, folks. I haven't even talked about earnings, you know, all that stuff. Um, you know, uh, there's there's a whole next week's going to be a big earnings week, and I I will and, and it is significant this week because we're seeing a lot of the banks report and other folks. So you know, hopefully uh, things will get back somewhat to normal, so I can get on my normal uh, run as far as covering the markets on on a detailed level. But for right now, we're going to have to do these big big broad strokes at it and uh, make the most of it. So I will, um, uh, but this this spread is the significant spread. It is what the Fed, the Fed is manipulating this spread because this will keep them from ever having to worry about zero rates. Anybody that's experienced zero rates knows they're bad. 
Europe is upside down because of them. I don't know what's going to happen to uh, Europe. I haven't spent a lot of time. I used to uh, have uh, more, inf uh, I guess, people influence me overseas clients that I used to watch at. But um, yeah, so yeah, there's a good example. I see somebody just commented that a 600 square foot DC apartment sells for 650,000. Yeah, earnings do affect prices. They actually do. Um, I realize that there's a lot of companies with no earnings that that are out there, but they they do affect. They do matter. I, I know uh, that was one of the posts that I saw this morning is like five tech companies that are exploding. Well, one of the things that um, in our we're we're doing our wave tech training for our software in private meetings now because we're really got uh, folks running their 401k, some serious money, and they just don't want to be broadcast over the internet uh, for everybody to, to listen to what they're doing. So we're doing those in private meetings now. Uh, but the one of the things that, uh, that we talked about in yesterday's meeting was that we built in our software the ability to actually model a brand new stock right out of the box just when IPO we, the second day, after the second day of trading, we can actually start to model those and make uh, buy and sell decisions based on, on that. And it's, it's pretty interesting because the stocks that have went up, you know, two, 300%, you could have put those in the models and it played them. You could have bought them because you liked them, but now you have a sell discipline attached. And what you'll end up seeing is at some stage, these things will roll out. And we know from the Amazon, you know, Amazon started this model where you could run negative for, you know, at what seemed like forever, maybe almost 10, 10 plus years, and end up uh, finally turning the model into this revenue model. And so there's a lot, of, a lot of new ways of looking at the markets, a lot of new things about earnings, but earnings do matter, I will tell you for sure. Yeah, so yeah, Jacob, I actually, well, I was talking, actually commented exactly what I was talking about here. Yeah, what happens when a stay at home trade uh, ends? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Is it, you know, is it going to end or expand? You know, I, I don't know. Um, that's the beauty, is uh, from, from my viewpoint, that's why I have software. You know, I don't, it's not emotional. I'm going to get, that's why I report to you folks on the channel. Uh, you know about the database and I went through a long dissertation about the database today because those are the things those are the metrics that model that matter because though we're tracking you know 16,500 individual symbols looking at them individually too many people think you can look at the S&P say well the S&P is going up so you can buy a stock well you have to look at correlations and other factors but even if you do that that's not a good reason you always want to trade individual stocks on an individual basis. And that's how our models look at the world. Everything is its own world. We, we, uh, one of my old buddies on the trading floor days used to always say, he'd look up at the screen and whatever, the markets are down or up. And usually when they were down and he would say, my world's fine. I don't know how you're doing, but my world's fine. I don't care what the market's doing. So it has to do with you know, portfolio construction and how you're doing it. And one of my new key lines I was talking about is stop speculating and start managing your money. And, you know, that's that's what we do. And that's why I start my little, every night I start off talking about, you know, I help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. That's all I know. That's what I've been doing for well over 25 years. So that uh, that's that's where my focus has been and running that type of environment. So you could take those five stocks that everybody's talking about, the bubble, and run those, put them in the system, and tell me when to sell them. It's not gonna sell the top. It's just gonna get you out and protect your money at some stage. So let's, um,
Yeah, Colin, uh, that's a really good comment about WaveTech is trying to set up. I, I kind of dropped the ball. Uh, I had a, a, a buddy of mine who was one of the original founders of um, Thinkorswim, and I, uh, yeah, I, I dropped the ball with with uh, Charles because it just got uh, life got too crazy for me, and uh, that's something I really would like to be able to do is how to take and take signals out of WaveTech to be able to get them to um, uh, be able to um, use option strategies. I was hoping just to put some, you know, get a signal, put some verticals on, play it out. Uh, we tried a couple of trades, it just got way too, uh, way Okay, so I see quotes from uh, uh, Wall Street, <laughs> the first Wall Street movie from Floyd's Garage. All right, let, let's move on to, uh, let's go to the Dower next. Yeah, so it's interesting why we weren't looking the, uh, go back to the futures here. Uh, I'm going to put over here on a five minute chart. So while I was going through all that, we saw the market decline, bounce off its uh, this five minute graph. And now we're we're printing uh, new highs again. Let's see here. Now let me Yeah, this is the futures. Let's go to SPX real quick. These dots that are up here. Uh, I'm going to show you this. This is a five minute graph. We'll see if they they play out. But they're <laughs> it's printing uh, thir suggesting a intraday price of 38.67. We traded 55. We have new highs at 56.16. So that is uh, yeah. I just yeah. I'm just watching my news ba uh, badges as well. We're seeing. Uh, which is really weird. Uh, uh, President Biden plans to extend payment pause on student loan borrowers until October 21st. So what that means <laughs> is you got another six months of your life when they when they reenact them. Although, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Uh, interesting, interesting. All right, so let's, uh, but this is what the SPX intraday is telling us. Let's do something, let's time, let's let's go down to a, like a one minute graph. Let's see what's got, okay. No objectives there, nothing really going on, but we have printed up, like I said, to a 56, 38, 56, 16. So we, we traded down over here while, while I was talking down to 46 and then now it's rebounded and this is part of the the machines running the show here so let's go ahead and dig into the the dollar let's go to the daily dollar and start looking at this this is something that i talked about a couple days ago in the live stream i did the other night uh if life provides for that i will do another 15 20 minute live stream raw like that if i can um I, like i said i it, it, things are just not uh not at a place i can make those kind of commitments at the moment yeah you're welcome jacob yeah somebody said i think my taxes went up 25 percent today um maybe Okay, so uh, let, we're going to get to dollar. Uh, this is going to be quick. And then we're going to hit on on gold and silver next. Okay, so I see some comments going there. And um, I, I did make a note to myself. Somebody asked about the when when the stay at home trade ends, uh, Paul. I, I I did make a note on that to kind of keep a watch. I've got a, a little watch list that I keep on things that I 
that I see that you folks are asking that that happened up. Uh, So let's, um, yeah, so as we look at the dollar, I talked about this on, on the other night on the live stream, is that what I think is going to happen here is we're going to see it fall back into the moving averages. It's done that already. Uh, we PPM1 is at a 0.12. That's not even a big deal. There's some support here at the 90.35 level. The low has been 90.28, so we bounced off of that. So we're going to stay in this grid for a couple more days, but we are seeing kind of a weird, I think we have to go to the weekly to get any good feel for this thing. Uh, weekly is hitting, this was something I discussed in the live stream the other night, was the 9074 was going to be a, a serious resistance point. We traded all the way to 90, 95, so we traded above that. We're back below that number right now, 9049, but 9074 will be the number on the dollar to watch and is likely to move, continue to move toward the lower ends of the market grid, which would put us down around 9032, 9008. These are the same numbers I mentioned the other night. These are still in play. Probably the interesting thing is these dots down below, if you see where my cursor is going, those are suggesting some low targets of 83.50. I'll show you on a monthly chart here and 79.21, 79.36. So I think there's a possibility this 83 number is not that far fetched. And, you know, once again, I, I mean, I, I sometimes feel like a, con, a contrarian from the standpoint of what, what I've seen. But the stories are out there is dollar higher, interest rates higher and small caps higher, right? That's, that's, that's the bet that everybody's putting on. So we have such, uh, when we get these consensus ideas that flow out there, there does, I think the crowd mentality is bigger than it was before. And people wanna call them amateur traders, you know, the Robin Hood guys. That, I, don't, I don't really believe in that, but what I do believe in and I've seen over the years is human nature. These things always played out. They're maybe exaggerated a little bit. I don't think that's that's the case. I you know um, you know people do make mistakes with their money and they do stupid stuff. Um, you know it takes it takes a certain amount of money you have to risk to learn how to trade right and how to how, probably the hardest thing if you're trading to ever learn how to do is how to take a loss. You know, that's that's the hardest thing. It's like to admit you're wrong, to take just take it and get out and, you know, play for another day. And it, it's a it's a tough one. Obviously, if you do that enough times, you run out of money anyway. But that's the toughest thing there is out there. But this is the consensus of everything out there. So as we look at the monthly graph, what we see here is, is um, this is where that, 83 handle, 86 handle is the number. That's the 200 month moving average. Last time we saw that get hit was back in 18. And it looks like we're coming back. There's also on a monthly basis, the 87.42 is the low target on a monthly off of Fibonacci. And then what we're looking at is that 200 month right there too. So 87, 86, maybe spike to 83, okay? Uh, but this is most likely going to be the point, just like we saw multiple times before, we could go back in history a lot, but the only part of history that matters is probably the last two years. And we're, we're going to have to watch what the treasurer, the new treasury secretary, Janet Yellen, former chairman of the federal reserve, what she does, because l listen, I, I, I know I've, this has been a, a, a series of rants today, but you have to understand if you're running the Federal Reserve, you're always going, why was why won't the Treasury do this? If they did this, this would make life easier. Well, this is the perfect setup, right? You've got the former chair of the Federal Reserve in the Treasury now. Janet Yellen's gonna put her, her name on on currency. It's a big deal, you know. Um 
so think about it though everything that she thought that the treasurer should have done based on what the fed's doing she now gets to play at some level and so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens here she's already putting her 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 name out there like we need to spend big and all that and so all they got to do is create the money get the money so that treasury can get their hands on it and the rest is history so yeah i can see why markets are are excited about stimulus you know and it's it's not going to be stimulus in the way I, I think ultimately the way people think. So we'll see. I won't go too deep into that. So let's go into gold finally. Let's start off with the daily chart in gold. I know a couple of days ago I talked about that being a low at 18. Oh, uh, I think, let's see here what, it, what the low was. I think it was. Yeah, 1800, 1801 on Tuesday night. Boy, that was perfect call. So we're going to trade back into these moving averages. 1852 to 1868. We trend, we're printing 1867. So gold is acting as I thought it would. I still think there is a major bottom setting up. Let's go to the weekly. Weekly is coming right into a configuration of moving averages. PPM1 is turning up, but still negative. So it's went through its first derivative from the bottom up, which is a positive sign. It tells us we're probably going to print toward the 1890 level. There's going to be a ton, a ton of resistance between right where we're trading right now 1868 all the way up to 1890 there's going to be at least in my opinion another two weeks of consolidation once that completes this elongated dragon head that that's this formation that that happened over here that is completing and we're going to see this thing start to move higher in the pattern gold's going to come back into play and maybe that will be inflationary expectations all that type of stuff if we go over here and i'm going to expand this out just a little bit just so we can get a, a better view if we go out onto the monthly chart and i've talked about this over the past several months is this 10 period moving average or the 10 month moving average is the primary demand line in this pattern and what that means is that when that line is up sloping and, and we've got a high enough PPM level on there, the markets will just actually go above and below that, especially on a monthly. So we're trading right at it as at 1865, last trade 1867. So that's going to continue to dominate as we go and look at the actual chart here and see what's going on. The moving average is jumping about 20 handles per month. So we're still about 10, 10 days, 11 days from the end of the month. So yeah, I'm expecting to see this thing jump somewhere up around somewhere around the uh, 1880 level as we come into February. So most likely we're going to see gold move back toward 1880, 1890, Ultimately, what it's doing is setting up a major bottoming formation. And let me just see if I can get anything to come up here. Let's, let's see if there's any Fibonacci objectives here to look at. There is not on the monthly. So I, I believe that this top hit uh, off of August 31st that month that high was 2095 on and this is the nearest futures chart so this is 
definitely going to be the target range ultimately that's a big run from here but there's at least i'm going to say end of february maybe march before we'll see that pattern set up there's another six eight weeks maybe a little longer it could be as long as uh into the end of april beginning of may before we'll see this set up all right let's uh Don't get a chance to look at this much, but we're look at the monthly silver. And this is interesting just that it formed this giant, what I call dragon head here. So there's a lot more work to do in this chart as well. We do have uh, starting, I'm going to do a, a top down, which means we're going to the longest chart first. So we got huge momentum underneath this market, 2286 that number's busting out at about a dollar 10 per month so 23 handle is uh let's see will be where that number will be so that'll be your major support and let's go to the weekly and just see where what the intermediates are saying so intermediates are really setting up this is probably your if anything happens in this cycle we'll probably see silver lead the way off the lows, not gold. This might be a better play. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anyway, these these uh, silver looks like it's going to be the leader off of this pattern. Just looking at the weekly, so we'll, we'll see this thing start to uh, uh, uptick. PPMs are starting to look pretty bullish at least another week but this is definitely this thing is i would call a bottom on an intermediate basis and you'd be looking for a breakout and potentially going you know going back to those august highs as well ultimately 30 bucks so there's there's a move there and that's not going to happen overnight this is something that's going to happen over over multiple months it's not going to be that quick we still have like i said another week maybe two before this pattern sets up but this ppm one is at a plus 0 0.41 2492 is major support so you can play off of that number anything off of 2492 you can look to be uh, buying okay so i guess we'll do bitcoin next I remember it wasn't that long ago that I did the video on Bitcoin 23,000 and I think Bitcoin was at 15, 16,000 at the time. Might have been a touch lower, but I think that was the range. Uh, so how, this was, and it was based off of these, these dots that are here in the middle of the screen. The, the objectives there were 21, 768, 23, 7, and so I can tell you where the market was when I was talking about that. Um, 11,390. So that, that was back in October. And then we started to get the, uh, you know, started to see things just start to move sharply higher into these ranges here. And now we saw this huge thing. What we're going to set up now is a dragon head, which means big time consolidation. This is the weekly. And until this 10 period moving average comes into play, which is jumping at just about 2,000 per week. So we're at 26,537. So we're talking about 28,000 and then 30,000. So probably, usually there's a little bit of a lag. So Somewhere around 30,000 is going to be the magic number. Let's go to the daily and see what we pick up there. Thank you, Wacky Warrior. Appreciate it, man.
Yeah, Lori's asking if, um, yeah, we actually covered that. Uh, uh, Lori's asking a question about our software, as if somebody was buying, yeah. Yeah, we actually tell you not to buy those symbols that have moved. It's it's not, that's not how it works. Uh, but you should join us. Uh, what's, the, what's the day? 20th? It's only $3.18 a day. And um, if you, uh, if you want to see that, um, I just put this screen up for a minute. This is where you go to sign up. And you sign up, it'll cost you what, whatever, uh, 10 times through 30 bucks. And if you don't like what you see, but you should come and set it up. But we, we teach you how not to come into trades that will call long in the tooth or already experienced their, their stuff. So, um, So anyway, you got it there. So, uh, but as we as we continue to go on, uh, Bitcoin, uh, look at the daily. There are. <laughs> this is really interesting. Uh, I'm glad we went through this this chart. But the objectives on the upside on Bitcoin on the uh, off the Fibonacci numbers is similar to what we were seeing, like looking at those crazy numbers in the S and P. You know, 46, 53 handle, right? We're looking, look at this up here, these dots above. The the targets above are for 54,700, 64,000, and 69,700. I'm rounding numbers. And yeah, so that's the Fibonacci objective that came out of this last little rally here. And so... Uh, looking at this chart, that's very likely. Um, well, you got this guy. What's that guy from uh, Shark Tank? They always call him Mr. Wonderful. Um, he thinks he's a financial genius. He keeps telling you that it's that a nothing burger. So anybody that's telling you that, sorry, we got ambulance out front. Wow, it stopped here. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so what, what we're seeing uh, from this is very interesting, this pattern. This is a dragon head formation, and they usually resolve themselves to the previous trend to the upside. Uh, so, yeah, Bitcoin higher. I don't know. If it, we'll, put it, we'll put it on the record as the Fibonacci object, objective is 54,700. Maybe I need to do that video for you folks. Um <laughs> Yeah, Kevin O'Leary. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the guy, so he just comes off as, as a jerk, but I think that's part of the game. Um, anyway. Yeah, he, uh, him and Cuban are, are pretty funny to watch. Probably two of the luckiest guys uh, that ever made money in their lives. All right. Yeah, I know. I get on these rants. You guys got to put up with the old man to get the good stuff. There is a chart that I um, that I haven't covered for a while, but I think it's kind of it's interesting. I uh, just put up lumber, and basically uh, have lumber going up uh, thirty percent more. Lumber prices have already from the lows. Uh, I'm going to put up a weekly chart in a minute, but they're at seven hundred up five percent today. So let's go to weekly. Yeah, here we go. 993.1200 on there. We, going back to a year ago, let's go back, not to the lows, but let's go back previous. This stuff was, was trading 188. 
So now it's 700 and we're getting objectives on the intermediate for it to move to 993, 1247. So just about from just last week, almost a double in prices again. So that's part of the other reason for the inflation in home prices. Um, yep. Um, you guys asked for it, another rant, right? So part of the home price inflation has to do with replacement costs new. Back in my way younger days, before I got involved in markets, I was in a real estate and I was a certified real estate appraiser. And the first thing every appraiser has to do is a little book on replacement costs new. So you go to market price, you have to have a replacement cost new. This is a Fannie Mae form and that's what happens. So replacement cost new is going up because of materials. Uh, some people talk and look at uh, copper. Copper is really not much to look at. Uh, you know, copper is still used a lot and it is an industrial metal, but in housing, it's almost all the pipe and everything is now PEX and there's a minimal, all the tips and everything that connects are, end up to be copper, but they're uh, probably 5% of the total install of, of a, a new system. So anyway, but the, this is part of the cost this, you know, so yeah, there's things are going crazy in real estate and prices are going up, but so are the underlying materials and the costs going up. And this is pretty substantial. You basically tripled the cost in, in the last year in 12 months of the cost of lumber. And we're still seeing uptrends that are telling us that there's even more to that. So that that's somewhat interesting, I think. All right, it is, um, what, 312 Eastern Time. Uh, yeah, so folks, uh, just everybody watching, just make sure that you... Um, Yeah, make, make sure that you keep watching the channel because I am this afternoon. I'll do my usual in and out run. And then when I get back, I'm going to finish the uh, Kathy Wood video on ARC. It's called Re the rebuilding of ARC Invest. And I think you'll, you'll find it interesting. It's a long one. I think it's going to be close to 50 minutes, but it's two parts. Part one and two, watch them all. Because uh, the philosophies and things that Kathy's talking about and my interaction with them, part two is actually rebuilding her strategies, utilizing our multivariant models, uh, dynamic indexing, along with this uh, dynamic profit harvesting uh, allocation tool that we have built in. And that's in WaveTech and in, the, in our other platform as well. All I can tell you is uh, the other thing is... Um, <laughs> It, it, it makes it a real simple deal if you're really into the innovation or anything. Anyway, I'm not going to do a sale, big sales pitch, but it's something you should definitely check out. And you can go to Portfolio Expert, no E, just PortfolioExpert.com, and you can check things out. There's videos and other stuff on there. So there you go. Well, I did it. That I. So I only got one super chat, so I got I got to get paid some way. But that's the best way to support us and the channel and what we're doing. And I've got some, you know, after some things get uh, hammered out here, I've got some interesting plans for this channel. And I think most of you will like it. Some of you probably won't because people don't like change. But there's, there's some very interesting things that's going to be happening uh, hanging around Bob Kendall. That's what I'll tell you right now. So... Let's. I'm going to open up the uh, the gates. Yeah. So um, yeah, we'll talk about that. MP. Uh, I, I I'm still bullish on the markets. I are they stretched? Uh, yeah, but there's still more to go. 
Uh, we could go, uh, and I talked about this. If you weren't around earlier, make sure you check out. Yeah, let's do the let's do the stock thing, guys. Let's give me some stocks. All right, um, I've got quite a few, so let's uh, let's stop there, and then uh, hopefully I can get through a bunch of these. We'll we'll do the close together, and we'll call it quits. Yeah, just I'm going to kick off something here and. Just go here. One of the things that that I did last year, I built a portfolio live back in May, and it was the airlines Buffett. So when Buffett sold the airlines, what I did was told everybody to buy the airlines. That uh, in fact, the amount of trolls around. Warren Buffett that believe in this this guy. I mean, I'm an old man, but this guy shouldn't be be doing anything. But any, um, but the bottom line is, he sold the airlines at the low. He blew out. He's probably selling. He he's pretty much um, um, trying to think of the right way to say this. I mean, he was he was selling, and then once he had sold, he told you he was selling. OK, otherwise he was he was probably the big seller as the airlines were declining into that period. And my hypothesis was that that Buffett was done selling. The big seller was out of the market, that these things would recover, that the Fed, the government, whoever you want to call them, would come in and bail out the airlines. They're not going to let the transportation section sector disappear. That's not going to happen and that you there'll be a lot of profit to be made. So this chart that I have on the screen right here is exactly that. So we built this. There was a little downside when we built the, the portfolio and it ended up the year, if you look down, 102% off of the airlines, just trading nine symbols. You know, and right now there's eight of them along. Uh, it's not doing much so far year to date, only up one and a half percent. But I'm going to Tie this in to covering jets, the ETF, and and see how that how that all plays out. But this is the strategy. These are the open positions. I think most of these uh, came in in November. Looks like JetBlue came in on on January seventh. But most here's another one, one thirteen UAL. Somebody else requested that, so I'll I'll cover those. The, I'll just do start with the airlines here. Is that we're you uh, so UAL was a buy on 113. It's up a little bit more than a half a percent since the buy, uh, and then uh, but these are how all the positions are right now. Delta is the only one underwater right at the moment. It went long on 115. So we we're back in these things pretty heavy. If we look go back to the summary of the portfolio, is you can you can uh, see that we're right now. 94% of the money that's allocated to this strategy is being used. And, you know, it's been pretty choppy. We haven't been able to move the, the meter that much, but it is doing the classic, uh, what we call wave tech stair step, where 
it goes up, goes sideways, goes up, and it just keeps stair stepping. The key to this chart will be if it stays above this previous low and the equity curve, then it, it'll, it'll be ready to, to move, move much higher from that standpoint. But yeah, so let's go ahead and go back and let's do, uh, let's continue and let's do UAL. We'll, we'll go weekly on, on these. I still believe that we'll see the 200 week moving average uh, on this and that 200 week is 68.40 on UAL. I believe we'll see that. These charts are still, in my opinion, very bullish. Uh, we did have we did have some elements up here. We had some Fibonacci projections. I remember I was pretty excited. I thought we were going to get this run up. Uh, last August, we were going to see this thing move. We're getting Fibonacci projections up at 60 to 79. Well, they got invalidated on, on a decline. But we did have just recently a cycle low come in on UAL uh, on a weekly basis three weeks ago. And that's about the time where the models actually bought this symbol. So um, let's go to Jets next, which is is going to give us a, a view of the the industry as a whole. But somewhat mixed, but I think that this thing will also move towards its 200 day. Also got that on right on uh, on Christmas was the cycle low projection. So this should uh, continue higher toward this 200 day. And that put us back. This is interesting, actually. If we look at 1320, looking back at last year, this stock was was trading. Uh, this uh, ETF was trading at 32.25 and getting back to that number is 27.56. So we'll probably end up eventually getting back to what was going on with these companies before they got basically shut down. Uh, everybody learns from these negative periods, right? So you, you learn when, when you get disrupted. Every restaurant owner, everybody that's been disrupted in this craziness that we've lived in the last year has been has learned something, learned about their business, learned about, you know, how many people they need, what type of things they need to do. That's what the, the hard times and that's what losing actually does too. You learn from losing, not from winning. And when things are easy, you don't, you don't learn those things very, you, know, you, you don't get any lessons when everything works. Uh, it just works. And so now with everybody's had to re, think everything. So all of these airlines are rethinking how they approach their clients. Uh, we'll see what type of, uh, there's going to be a new airline industry come out of this. It will be reconfigured at some level, whether it's how they charge their fees, whatever, but they've had to work through this just to survive. And there will be, I guarantee you, there will be some Janet Yellen money coming to the airlines and there will be some stimulus that hits directly into the airlines in a big way. Once, uh, you know, it's interesting, I'll just make this comment that there's a 100-day mandatory mask in federal buildings that, you know, and, uh, you know, it's supposed to, everything on COVID is supposed to be about science, but 100 days sounds somewhat random. That was an old Newt Gendridge comment that he made his first 100 days of legislation when he became uh, Speaker of the House. It's just an old number that politicians like to stick around and throw out there. So who knows, maybe after 100 days, they just start throwing money into this stuff and everything's fine to travel. And we'll, we'll see what happens, folks. I'm serious. Uh, you know, it, it, there's going to be, I think, a lot of reality revealed to all of us very soon from the standpoint of what what going forward looks like and we'll just have to see uh what happens here but as we uh but jets is that's it okay let's uh hit some random stocks here um wow uh so this is a weekly chart on Tularan. somebody asked about this uh ppms look pretty good uh this thing was moving off the lows pretty good uh i'll tie together um 
Let's go over to WaveTech just for a minute. I just want to see, see if it's in the system. Yeah, so uh, this is on a weekly basis. So this is the the last buy on this company was at 91 cents. So it's already up 184%. Uh, pretty ugly chart for the most part, but it does have a good rating. If we flip this over to a, a daily one, two, we might, might see something a, a little bit interesting here. Yeah, so it had two buys at a buy here, it just bought recently at 158, so it's up 63. So this thing's pretty choppy though. Not not a lot of really uh, good modeling going out of out of that stock. But if we go back and just look at the setup here. We're getting RXT cells. This thing's pretty powerful. I'm not I don't know anything about this company, what they're doing, but the uh, the PPMs are all in good shape to continue this intermediate trend which came in at 91 cents that's where uh, our models recognize that there was a trend here so is it played out I don't I don't know you know these things like I said I don't know what what industry or anything this thing is in so it's just uh, but that that would be the analysis of that let's go to uh, got to do this one got to do Netflix right Netflix is is just blowing up. I'm going to do the same thing. I just want to see. It's interesting. Uh, I just want to see what the intermediate models are doing with this stock. It actually intermediate currently does not have a trade. Oh wait, this is daily. Hang on. Yeah, no trade. So we, we're not really not hitting on this thing at all. Um, just kind of, I guess this was an earnings report that came out that jacked this market today. Prior to that, it's been pretty flat, been trendless. So we're seeing a breakout. So I would suspect if we go to a, a daily chart here that, wow, yeah, I mean, look at, look at this gap, right? So... <clears throat> Yeah, so these are tough to read when you see this. Is this going to be an RXT cell? Absolutely. Is that, does that, you know, this thing will probably backfill. Uh, I would feel better about talking about this on Friday than today. Yeah, Sean, guess what? You're wrong. Uh, no model can predict the next bearish shift. You'll see. Hang around, man. Um, we've not missed one. In, in like 30 years so um, yeah um, but models can no one nothing predicts anything by the way um, and this has been a day of rants um, uh, models don't predict anything uh, all you have to do is ask the climate change guys that they've been predicting everything wrong it's what we do from our models is not predicting at all it's actually responding to changes and trends. So we wait for an event to happen, it's, and then we make a decision to buy or sell. We don't anticipate, we don't make things up, we don't go, yeah, it doesn't work that way. You know, so um, uh, there is some on the channel, if you wanna watch some of the old WaveTech trainings, there's quite a few of them posted out there under, I, I'm not sure what section of the channel it's on. But there's uh, probably some playlists and things. There's le literally like 40, 40, 50 hours of video there. So, uh, but yeah, it's not about models predicting. So you, you misunderstand even what a model does, especially in AI, especially in uh, doing any kind of trading modeling. So all you're doing with the models, just so you folks know, and everything I show you, is making decisions based on the configuration, the patterns, these PPMs I show you uh, are, are not predictive. They are just telling us what the change is happening and that there's a directional change happening. Once you have that, you can go to patterns. That's what 
technical analysis is about. So it's not predicting. You make a trade based on probabilities. It's about probabilities, not predictions. So anyway, that's why you get, uh, if you go through our database, you'll see everything has a map on it. Everything has a uh, how well it's done in, in making trades, win-loss ratios, percent wins, all that stuff, very, very uh, mathematically um, oriented from the standpoint of how these things do. So models don't predict anything. Uh, models suck at that. Prediction models aren't very good at all. And I would, and having said all what I said, yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, a predictive model uh, is, is worthless. Uh, what we're doing is looking at, at trends and then we follow trends and we ask every new bar, is this okay? Is this part of what we expected? And all those things. So it's a much different situation. Uh, the type of, of models that we run are uh, what's con uh, is a expert model. And so if you go to robotics expert models, or uh, for instance, like if you go to Tesla and watch them build cars, those are all expert AI, every bit of it. Every part's expected to be at a certain point. When it's at a certain point, the weld comes down. Everything is based on that. That's exactly where we operate in an expert system, which has got an inference engine that looks at all the data and then said, if these conditions exist, then do that. So nothing's predicting. It's just saying, if these conditions, we know that the probabilities are that this next thing will happen. Doesn't mean it will happen. The probabilities are there. And if certain things don't happen, then we, we exit out of there. And that's what is driving all my analysis on the channel. That's what, I, what I'm doing from every aspect of when I'm talking on uh, anything that, that's going on in, in the markets at all is looking at those probabilities. And that's what the PPMs do and all that stuff. But thanks for, uh, for the comment. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, uh, Jacob, I agree. When you follow thousands of stocks, there's... <laughs> yeah, I know I'm supposed to be covering stocks right now, right? Uh, but the bottom line is when you do cover thousands of stocks, and that's what I've differentiated myself in, the typical guy that's drawing a trend line on some index chart telling you it's going to break out or break down or all that stuff. That stuff is complete rubbish, okay? Not that you can't get it right one in a while, once in a while, but all of that stuff is, is, is rubbish. When you start to be able to watch 16,500 trends, and it, the importance to me personally is that all of those models I built. So they're all, <laughs> we used to joke that when we started the software company many years ago, uh, back in 1994, when we were first building these models into a serious AI environment, we were going to call him Virtual Bob, okay? Because that's what we were trying to do. We literally took brokerage statements from trades that I did and tried to figure out what the exact sell setups were so that we could des decide where to buy and sell. So that's exactly what uh, what I came in with modeling and growing up. I've been actually doing some sort of, of structured trading since 1985-86. I had a computer on my desk in 1982. Nobody, people used to walk into my office and ask me what it was. And I had an Apple II with VisiCalc so I could run spreadsheets, electronic spreadsheets, and all that stuff. So I've, I've been playing with the math and markets for a couple of days, as they say. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I'd see a comment on here that we're seeing the, uh, E minis kind of everything's kind of blowing up. They just want to give us an RXT sell here today, folks. We're we're at uh, the S and P futures printing thirty eight fifty even high. We're on the cash. We're at fifty seven seventeen. So yeah, we're going to start getting getting uh, kind of set into these things. All right.
Yeah, that's something. Uh, yeah, here's somebody asked for Hasbro. This is the daily in Hasbro. Kind of hit its objectives. Let's let's go to weekly. I don't think you're going to tell much on the trend here. Yeah, this uh, trading right at its 200 week moving average, just above it. Uh, no real momentum here. It's kind of a, a dead stock. Um, let me go monthly. I'm 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 digging deep here. Yeah. Monthly does have a 110 objective. I don't know if that's very realistic. Could be. We do have a decent short term uptrend on the short term element of the monthly. But not a, not a lot here. Sorry, I can't I don't I can't seem to help much on that one. And of course, this is monthly on DraftKings. And let's go to weekly. There's not a lot there, but it has set up a dragon head. And I do remember this stock coming up in a live stream before, way back when, when we got this RXD cell. And that put us into this sideways mode, put us into this giant dragon head. This is going to take a while to play out. Um, uh, uh, just a guess would be, 12 months, you're going to be trading probably in this range. If you can see these numbers on the screen between, you know, we'll go S2, R, uh, where are we trading right now? Yeah, S2, R2, uh, 56 to 36 is going to be a random range. Uh, let's let's go to a little shorter, just see if we can see any, any trends. Yeah, so here is the dragon head. I remember talking about all this stuff. Uh, we do have an upward objective on the intermediate for a move to 71. PPMs, there's not enough, not very much data here for me to get a really good read on this thing. I, I could go over to our other platform and bring it up. Um, didn't mean to do that. Let's go to daily. Yeah, daily just kind of waffling around in this consolidation range we've been in for the last month. So uh, weekly is the only positive thing I can find there. Yeah, I did cover Bitcoin in detail, so you'll have to watch the rebroadcast. And once things are up, when the rebroadcast comes up, we mark the timeline, so you should be able to go under on the um, on the timeline and see where I was talking about Bitcoin. All right, let's keep flowing down this thing. Oh, we got to do. Uh, Let's go weekly BABA. So we'll, we'll call this the Hunter Biden trade here. Um, so you can see that this thing is starting to do well. It's interesting that uh, Chinese stocks are doing well today. That's gonna, that, that's one of the notes I want to make to myself is to kind of watch um, the Chinese markets a little bit, maybe from an indice standpoint, and uh, see what, what we come up with. But we have seen uh, just a quick comment on the S&P. We're, we're seeing it at 38.55. I think the high so far has been around 56 and change. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so BABA has been, uh, been underwater. It's back up to its resistance point. So it's probably played out pretty good, although PPM1 is at a 0.20. Uh, the big number here is minus 0 0.40. There's only a 20% probability that it's going to trade above the 71 level. So around 271 is going to be the top end of this market. Probably remain between 271 and 250 is going to be a, a short-term consolidation it, and that's about all I can give you on, on that one. Here we are, Tesla. Remember uh, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the RXT cell in Tesla. <clears throat> what does that mean? Uh, we should get one to two weeks sideways in Tesla. That's what we're seeing here. Uh, Tesla's up a half a percent. 
I don't know if we're going to see these giant moves like we've seen in the past, or some of these big percent days. Now that it's in the S&P, there's going to be so many ARBs on the other side. I know everybody was excited to get this market into the S&P, but now that it's part of the index and it's also at the top end of the index, you're going to, I, my expectation is you'll see some muted volatility there uh, as far as that goes. So if you were doing option trades and all that, that's, uh, that's fine. So let's do uh, keep working. AMD. I think the only positive thing that's happened around the chip sector has been the replacement of the Intel guy uh, CEO. But this is this is a stock that is has lost all of its momentum. Had that big surge back in July, and we're just seeing it trade in a sideways range for right now. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll go back to Tesla here in a minute. One second. I, I don't think I covered that very well. Um, but yeah, the um, not much here. So let's go back. Let's go back to Tesla and look at some numbers here. So the the number that I would be watching for here. On a weekly basis, probably ultimate downside is maybe the S1 number, which is 802. That would be about all you're going to get, at least for this week. But this pattern is fairly negative, and the extreme that is likely would be 776, 7. 50 range on this. Uh, we're seeing the momentum just absolutely stall here. That that's a definite negative what we're seeing from this standpoint. So all the all the buildup in this stock to, just to get you know we're going to be in this high level consolidation here. It's going to continue to probably have a bit in it just because of what's uh, going in the S and P. And uh, we're looking at the S&P now at 385795 I mean, they are just bidding this market. We're up 59 handles right now, 1.5% on SPX. All right. Yeah, I'm going to switch over here in a minute. Let's do a couple more stocks. I'm not going to do ARC K and for whoever asked for that, the video that I'm about to release, I'm going through not only ARC K but the constituents and rebuilding that. Uh, so that you can watch that, that video. I go through ARC K in detail in my, depending on uh, um, what kind of activity we get around those videos, I'm going to rebuild every one of the plan. My, my general plan at the moment over the next uh, bit of while is going to be to take and rebuild all of the ARC ETFs. Uh, they have six of them now. They just launched a new one. And, and I'm going to rebuild them all. Then I'm going to build a composite. I'm going to build an ARC index strategy, which is going to be all of their innovative strategies, all in one environment. So one of the things that our software lets us do is lets us build our own individual personal funds or personal ETFs. So I'm going to rebuild those and they'll dynamically trade. They'll do everything that uh, um, once it's set up, it's it's going to dynamically trade those those stocks. And, and the plan is uh, just so you can see exactly how that works. I'm going to build each one, rebuild each one in a video, show you some of the process that I did, rebuild it, the returns, and then the next phase will be to build this this composite, this ARC, ARC composite trade. And if you look at a lot of the ETFs, there's a lot of the same stocks across. There's a lot of cross 
Um, um, there's you know common stocks and all of these ETFs, and they're not very they're not very clean actually uh, from my viewpoint. But yeah, and then then my ultimate video was did uh, is Kathy Wood lucky or is she good? And that'll be an interesting one when I get around to that. And I, I'm not a troll actually. I, I'm impressed with what what they've done. So don't get me wrong. But I I, I want to contrast what you you can do when you have a sophisticated process that you can automate and make some really good decisions on. Um, I'm sure there's, if you could experience one of their meetings that you would see that people are, are debating what they should do with stocks. And, you know, and that's fine, but I mean, especially whoever's running the allocation process is pretty typical Wall Street stuff. So anyway, we'll, we'll get into that. All right, I just feel like I got to go here. Uh, we're going to go over to um, to this screen as the um, the futures are trading at the all time highs. Fifty two fifty just printed just a few minutes ago. Uh, we're trading fifty one fifty. One of the things I just want to watch this trade a little bit with you. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'll do a couple of stocks after the close. Those of you who watch the channel into this mode know that one of the things that I, I, I like to do here is to actually watch the market into the close. The, the most significant things to me is the last two minutes and uh, the last two minutes of live trading with the indexes, with the arbitragers trading, and two minutes afterwards to see what kind of squaring of positions we get. So there's a four minute window there and you can learn a lot from those four minutes, probably more than any other part of the day, in my opinion. You'll find out, uh, we're gonna find out here in just a few minutes, whether they're gonna bid this thing into close and see if there's any selling after this. So, you know, we're looking at um, right now, but 30, uh, 3852.50 is a high print. And we'll just see if uh, how this thing is gonna, gonna play out here. We got a little mini dragon head set up on, on the top up here. That tells us we're likely to see some uh, configuration. Um, haven't had a lot of fuel today. For those of you that know, this is my Runa commercial. And matter of fact, um, I did this before. Um, and that this, this, this is like a, a power drink with no sugar, no nothing in it. And we'll, uh, we'll see how it's 150 megs of caffeine, but it's not jittery caffeine. So enough of that. I'll give you guys this number here. Yep, it won't work. It's green. So anyway, um, yeah, so we're seeing a little bit of selling coming in here. We've got about 11 minutes to go. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, by Mango Runa. That is Mango Mango Tango. Yeah, it's funny. I, I actually, I, I really... If you folks haven't tried this stuff, it's really good. And I and people that know me, I was a big rock star fan many years ago. I used to buy that stuff by the cases. Um, and I finally uh, finally realized that uh, that stuff wasn't good for you. I think I OD'd a couple times on it, <laughs> just like cranking up. I guess people have done that with, with Red Bull and the whole bit. But this stuff is a lot milder and it's, it's just... Uh, it's a tea with no sugar. It's awesome. Anyway, so we're seeing some selling come in here just a little bit and not a lot. So we printed the highs. 5250 have been the highs. Uh, let's look at real quick at the RXT numbers that are going to be important here on the on the E minis. 
Let me get to the daily. That magic number is 383775. I'll explain this in a minute if you just joined. And for the cash, it's going to be thirty-eight thirty twenty-five. All right, so the two numbers we're going to be watching as we come into the close is on the futures 3837.75 and on the cash 3830.25. And I, I said this earlier that normally we don't get that sort of um, configuration where we get an RXT cell on the futures and the cash on the same day. Because of the way the futures trade 24 hours, they always have much different calculations. So this is a, a unique day, and I'll be watching that closely to see what we get from, from all of that. Uh, we've got about nine minutes to go. It's kind of, kind of boring here. Let's, um, let's go back to... Let's take a look at it. Let's do a quick review of Apple. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I put this Fibonacci grid on, on this thing a long time ago, and Apple has stayed within that, that grid for a long time. Let's go back and see where I put that on at. Wow. So that came from that initial sell-off that we had going back in September down to the lows. So for the since, since that point in time, so since September and October lows, we have continued to consolidate in this range all along. I mean, look at this. This is an interesting view. PPMs on, if we go to the current view of things, um, Yeah, thanks, Scott, uh, for those numbers on the on the channel. Appreciate that. So the but if we look at Apple here, this is interesting in that we've not been able to break out. You know, going way back here, the high was one thirty seven ninety eight. What was the high over here? We did make one thirty eight seventy nine. I remember discussing that we made a new high by a buck and this thing reversed back into the range again. So we continue to move back toward the 0.618, Over the past month and a half, we've been locked in a pretty narrow range actually from that viewpoint. So if we go over here to the weekly, you can see that same range is still there on the grid. Let me expand that out so you can see it a little bit. So we're trading actually up to the weekly top end of the weekly RXT. If I back up for a second and go to the daily, we're going to see that we are getting we're going to get an RXT sell. And my bet is that you're going to get RXT sells across the board. As far as how it's going to move into. I don't know when the earnings is uh, exactly Mata. I don't know if you want to if you know when that date is, you can give me that. That'll be helpful. But I, I think that uh, we're going to get the RXT sell. And then um, probably move sideways for a couple of days. So um, uh, Jan 27th, thanks. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, I would. Yeah, that's tough. Let's go over to the weekly and see if we can pick up any weekly trends here. So weekly is just really, uh, you got a positive tone. The only thing I would tell you is 126.14 moving up uh, to monitor Apple fairly closely. All you're going to need to do is use a simple 10-week moving average. That's going to be your support line. And you should continue to move back up toward that 137. So it looks like we'll at least move in 
move up into the earnings as long as they hold that number I just mentioned. So as long as you hold that 126, 127 level, you're going to move higher and ultimately move, probably end up moving into a new high. 137 is a magical number. The uh, PPMs are bullish enough, uh, have a large enough uh, slope to do something interesting. So we've got about five minutes to go. We're seeing a little more selling in the futures. I'll go back over there. We printed 52.50. Now we're back at 47.25. So we're seeing the, the liquidation come in ahead of time. So the machines are exiting. Folks that have been long all day are selling into the close so far. About three and a half minutes to go here. You can see the uh, PPM1 that's on the page here is accelerating down, starting uh, is down at eh, not just 0.10, so not, no big deal. <clears throat> but this is a one minute graph that you're looking at here on this page. So the, the key will be that last two minutes. So we got about a minute to go before we actually better part of two minutes to go before we'll be really watching the activity. But we did get a little dragon head, so it's it's consolidating. Typically, the dragon heads resolve themselves to the upside, meaning the previous trend was up. So before the dragon, that, that will tell us that we'll consolidate and try to get a little pop. So we'll see if there's some scramble in this last two minutes. We got almost at the two minute mark. The other thing we should see, this will be also interesting. <clears throat> Liquidity has stayed pretty good most of the day. I didn't mention that earlier, but on the far left hand side, you'll see the um, the size on the bid ask on the futures uh, level two stuff. And what, what you'll see there is that they're keeping a, a good handle, about 100. And you're seeing on the liquidity bar over here on the far right, what you're seeing there is down at the bottom. Let me just bring that up full screen. What you're seeing here is pretty decent liquidity on four and five bids and offers on either side of the market. So that's a, that's a good sign that there's reasonable liquidity as, as we uh, look at this thing. So that that's that's a good sign as well. But we are starting to push it down a little bit. Here's a new low 46. Now we are in that two minute range. So this this is where uh, where a lot is going to be derived from what's happening here. We're going to look at the action here on the close. This is where the mutual fund ETF companies are all having to balance out their equities. Some of this activity starts in the last 15, 20 minutes. That's where institutional money comes into play. This is not smart money. This is money that is doing what it has to do to balance out. So if they can't sell all the stock they need to sell, they'll sell futures to cover them. And then once they get the fills back in their final run on the market on close orders that they get, then that's why the next two minutes are significant in that we'll see if there's any any covering up of the shorts, which means they were able to sell all the stock they needed to sell. So uh, it just kind of gives you a institutional feel of the market. We just printed down to so far 525. That was a new low on this bar. We're in the final minute of trade. And uh, in just about 35, 40 seconds, we're going to get uh, the, the magic bell. So we traded down. to 45.7, uh, 44.50, there we go, right at the bell, they dumped them. So we traded 42s, uh, 41 handle, and we're still, we're still seeing some selling. So basically, what that tells you is they loaded up for some buying 
on the close and they didn't get it. We're printed 39 and change. So we'll watch this for another minute. I'll do a couple more stocks. We'll chat a little bit and Yeah, uh, thanks, Amers. Uh, that's interesting. Amazon just announced that they will work with Biden in distributing the vaccine. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Is it going to be on Prime? You, uh, do your own shot. Yeah, still, so, still a little selling, so no covering up. That's uh, all liquidation. So we printed as high as 52. Just do a final analysis of this close here. We, we printed as high as 52, and now what we're, we're seeing here is um, a, a print all the way down to, I think, 30. It, it printed down to 38 or something like that, so 38.50. So a lot of selling, uh, about 14 handles off the high. Um, so the question is, did we get our closes we're talking about? 38.42, that is an RXT. Uh, let's see what the actual close was on right at 1 o'clock my time. The close was 42.75. So we, were, we got an uh, RXT sell on the futures. And if we if we come over here to SPX, that's easy. Thirty-eight fifty-one eighty-five is the close. The magic number or the STX number is thirty-eight thirty point two five. So uh, what that means is that we're likely to get one to two days sideways. We'll see if that uh, the last time we had one of these. And going back to what I talked about earlier in the broadcast is that we saw a RX, RXT sell on the fourth, but then we had five gaps in a row. So we're going to see if that magical bid comes back into the markets. So, uh, yeah, I'm just looking at a couple of comments here real quick. Yeah, so uh, hopefully... There's enough here that you folks can watch this over the next couple of days to get a feel at, like I said, once the, once we get, once I close out this live stream, we, it will mark down all the stuff, all the timelines of what I talked about. So this is going to be your video for the rest of the week. And like I said, the Kathy Woods video will be out, uh, fairly soon. And, uh, I keep calling her Kathy, Kathy Woods and it's Cap. Kathy Wood, so but the um, that'll be out. That'll be fun to watch. I think it'll be interesting to see what can be done, and especially uh, what I'm actually going to show you is how to eliminate all the internal fees of her ETFs. They're 0.75, by the way. That's three times the SPX. It's very expensive uh, management, actually, and uh, you. <laughs> You, you really don't need it. Uh, and she's into this ultimate transparency mode. So she's going to tell you what she's doing, which is awesome. And uh, like I said, well, uh, that'll be out. So uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, showing up today. I'm going to keep this thing pretty tight. Um, Yeah, so uh, I see Jay asking, yeah, we're end of day um, platform, meaning that we collect our data today. We go to a data vendor, we get our data, we run all the models for the next day's open. So we generate the orders to buy or sell tonight, but we generate them for the next uh, data point that we can get to. So on stocks, mutual funds, it's the next open or tomorrow morning's opening on mutual funds that we do, it's tomorrow's NAV. That's the next data point you can execute on. So we always 
run the models, get the signal, next data point is where you're going to trade them. Now you could on 24 hour trading of stocks, or you have access, you could trade them earlier, but our models are looking at tomorrow's New York, NASDAQ, whatever opening. And we're, we're stuck to domestic US stocks and we, we can do uh, ADRs as well. Yeah, thank, thanks for thanks again, everyone, for uh, for coming. I, I really appreciate it. I, I think that you know I did I, I tried to give a lot of content, some some context to what's going on, and you know it's just uh, uh, hopefully in the next uh, week or two we'll be able to uh, get some normalcy going as far as the channel goes and broadcast and things that I'm doing. But you know I think the um, Probably the the best thing you know people are gonna you know is really getting getting signed up for the software. You know, you really it's the best way to support everything we do, and it's three dollars and eighteen cents a day. So it's really not a lot of money, but there's a lot of value in it. And for that, you get uh, screens. Um, uh, yeah, since I since I'm doing that, let's just let's just go there. And I'll close out this thing doing uh, doing what what we do. And if you go to portfolioexpert.com, you can find out all about it. This is our platform. This is what we do. We talk about modernizing financial investment framework. This is one of the most uh, unique things that you're going to run into on the internet. And what we're what we're showing you is how how to run using this platform. Uh, we, this is actually the portfolio expert. This is our high-end software, but we're going to teach you on how to do all the things that you need to do to be successful in managing your money, not speculating your money. And that that is that is key, actually. And you know that that's what it's that's what it's all about here. And you know, go to the website. You can actually watch our training videos are right here. We have stock screens that you can get. So we actually generate, this was done with uh, our uh, CFA that we had build our strategies, do all of the high-end fundamental work. Each one of these uh, are things that, that we supply uh, to you and that you can, um, you can get going uh, and, and run, run on. So uh, yeah, so visit us at, uh, at that. Uh, the, actually, the best way to get started is to go go to um, Kendall Report. You can do two things. You can give us an email address and sign up so you can find out about some of our offerings and things we're doing. We don't spam a lot. We don't send a lot of emails on this. You get uh, it's very incremental. And then if you want to get to uh, find out how to get WaveTech for about thirty bucks for the next uh, ten days. You can just go up here to this site and you go to Kendall Report slash WaveTech and it there's basically a deal walks you through how to get signed up. You simply just click on a button and you can go you can, you can get there really quick. So uh, more videos of me, but anyway, that's going to be your best best place. You got the market grid on literally lots of symbols uh, not only do you get do you get the uh, market grid but the the stock screens are available up there as well so you get it's if you're trading stocks and you're trying to manage money we have I think right now we we've got a fair amount of people actually managing their their uh, 401ks their individual accounts and stuff So you, you can definitely get all that stuff going from uh, from that that viewpoint. But there is uh, the ability which to get all the stock screens, everything. Anyway, folks, thanks again for for uh, 
uh, watching and hanging out with me and I appreciate it. Um, not, uh, like I said, I will do a brief video putting out some kind of schedule and what my expectations are as far as what, where I'm gonna be able to participate. As many of you may or may not know, I, I've just got uh, some obligations that I have to attend to, uh, family obligations I have to attend to right now. And um, there, um, so I'm not gonna be able to be as active on the channel until further notice, but I don't think it's gonna be a long time. Okay, thanks for everything. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate everything that, uh, nice comments and everything that we've got. Yeah, um, so anyway, folks, I shall sign out now. Have a great rest of your day. I'm on my way to In-N-Out. It's burger time.